Hello and welcome back to Sarah and Sarah. Welcome back, everybody. Um, we have some breaking news that is two weeks old. <laughs> Everyone, we haven't talked about the story mostly just because we never we we didn't get to it, but we always wanted to talk about the story. And as you can see from the title, Carly Lloyd, at the age of thirty nine, is retiring from soccer. Oh my gosh, I forgot she's thirty nine. I, I know, she's still thirty eight. Oh, she announced she's retiring from soccer, and I'm going to read her statement that she posted. My first love, my first passion, 34 years of playing with this ball. It has given me more than I could ever dream of. I could never have imagined the journey I've had. It has been incredibly hard, but I wouldn't have wanted it any other way. To say I will miss it is an understatement. I've given it all I have every single day. I have no regrets, but I still have two more months to grind and cherish playing. You best believe I'll give it. I'll give it all I have until the end. I can't begin to thank everyone for the amazing messages and words I have received. Thank you. It's not the end. It is just a new chapter in the next phase of my life. Oh, man, I can't believe it. So, I was sad. I know. It, this is, this it's is wild. End, it's the end of an era. So she will play the four friendlies that are coming up mm -hmm. at the end of this NWSL season will be her last matches. And and that is it. And, you know, and I think anyone who's followed women's soccer and U.S. Women's National Team or soccer worldwide knows Carly Lloyd's name. They know a legacy, her legacy, but her legacy is also kind of complicated, I think, in a lot of ways. Mm, yes, um, we're going to read from a story in a, just a second, but I want to kind of talk about this with Sarah. I mean, I think when you think of Carly Lloyd, you think... I think you think of someone who works hard, A. Uh, she's a goat. Yeah, yeah. Someone who's just been around, I mean, for a long time. Like you a think, breaker. You think about people who have been following the, the, the U.S. Women's National Team for 20 years. I mean, not quite. She hasn't been with the team for quite 20 years. But um, it's like when you see someone grow up like that and all of a sudden they're gone, I mean, retired, it's almost like they're such a fixture of – being on the team, being in the league, being playing, you know. Part of history. You know, she really is Tom Brady in that respect. I mean, Tom Brady has been playing at the utmost highest level for 20 years. 30. Let's not talk about that whack job. <laughs> for 25 years, he's been playing at the utmost top level of his sport. Just won the World the World Series. Just won the Super Bowl last year. Uh, I mean. Did, did he cheat? He only cheated when he was in New England. <laughs> mm -hmm. But. You mean, you think about him, he's 43 or 44 or something like that. And it's like, to be at that level, when so many people a, either get injured or they um, just retire. burn out or yeah. retire. But I will say, a lot of times people do get injured because the conditioning isn't there. And we all know Carly Lloyd is the, she's actually the goat of conditioning. No one could ever. And the ice bath, ice bath queen. Yeah, ice bath <laughs> queen. She, no one could ever say she wasn't fit. There was a lot of controversy around her, too, you know. Mm -hmm. We're going to read from an article, and it's kind of a long article, but we're going to read, and then we're going to kind of go over the article um, after we're done. So, U.S. Women's National Team star Carly Lloyd did it her own way, retiring with complicated and dominant legacy. Anyone who's been to a U.S. National Team game before has probably seen it. The team has dispersed the, and the field is empty, except for one player. Carly Lloyd, by her lonesome, is still out there doing push-ups or running sprints. But pretty soon, that ritual will be gone and the field will stay empty. Carly Lloyd, at the age of 39, is retiring and will appear in her final U.S. National Team matches this fall. Lloyd walks away as undoubtedly one of the most important players in history of American soccer, with 312 appearances, second only to Christy, Christine Lilly, and 128 goals, the fourth most in U.S. national team history. Chances are that if the U.S. played a game in the last decade and a half, Lloyd was a key part of it, le leaving behind a legacy that is more complex than it seems at first glance. It's almost surprising to see Lloyd call it quits as something she's never done, so much so that tenacity has become her personal brand. She loves sharing inspirational quotes about hard work on social media accounts, and she seems 
she has seemed to relish in defying people's expectations just so she could say, I told you so. There is perhaps no better example of, of it than the 2015 World Cup, the tournament that made her a household name and earned her the title of FIFA's Player of the Year. The U.S. started the tournament poorly, and Lloyd especially struggled with the two-way midfield role she had been given. She openly lamin- lamented feeling restricted by the tactics of coach Jill Ellis and being unable to, as she put it, express herself. After Ellis gave in and handed Lloyd the keys to the attack, Lloyd scored the goal against Japan that has become the the piece de resistance of her career. A shot from the half field to seal a hat-trick scored in the opening 16 minutes in a World Cup final. In the post-game press conference of the U.S. team's 5-2 win, she told reporters she expected it. During a burning training session, she said she envisioned scoring four goals in the World Cup final, one greater than her real-life tally. Look a bit closer, though, and Lloyd's legacy is that of a complicated and sometimes contradictory hero. A 2011 headline from her hometown newspaper, Lloyd, an exciting if inconsistent U.S. star, could have been written at almost any point in her career. For all her magic in major tournaments, pundits often derided her non-peak performances where she was labeled a turnover machine and below average. Fans wondered, based on her tournament appearances, why she was even in the U.S. team at all. Coach Pia Suntanga famously benched Lloyd because of her propensity to lose possession, telling reporters before the 2012 Olympics. It's too big of a difference between when she's really good and when she's really bad. When starting midfielder Shannon Box was injured in the opening game of the 2012 Olympics, Sundhage's only choice was to put Lloyd in. Suddenly, after being told she wasn't good enough, Lloyd had a chance to defy expectations on the biggest stage, and she did that, scoring in the, the first game against France and again to win the gold medal over Japan. At that time, Lloyd was as defiant as always, telling reporter of Sun Hage's lack of faith. When someone tells me I can't do something, I'm always going to prove them wrong. That's what champions do. She has claimed the critics fuel her, but the criticism clearly never sat well with her, prompting her to see criticism where there was none. In a pref- press conference earlier this year, she called out the journalist from her own, from her local newspaper, who has covered her longest, labeling him the hometown dude that can never support me. <laughs> That was iconic, I remember. (laughs) Because he dared to see it as an open question as to whether Vladko Antonovsky would bring Lloyd to the Tokyo Olympics. When other journalists wrote something she didn't like, they found themselves blocked by her on Twitter, even if they'd never tagged her. She named her her memoir when nobody was watching, yet she has always made sure everyone was watching, sharing curated clips of her workouts on social media. After the U.S. lost to Canada in the Olympic semifinals, earlier in the month she ran sprints after the game to make sure she was conditioned for the bronze medal game. But just in case anyone missed it, she took a photo of from a journalist in Japan and shared it to her own Twitter account. Such contradictions and inconsistencies in how Lloyd wants to be remembered versus who Lloyd was as a player may have been necessary for her to reach the heights of her greatness, though. Soccer has been a relentless act of self-improvement for Lloyd, a pursuit that requires constant effort and evolution. If success always came easy to Lloyd, how would she ever find that next level? It's the failures and setbacks that have made Lloyd better the next time around. Sometimes she seemingly needed to remind herself of her own greatness, too, just so she knew it was ready to be deployed. Lloyd's ability to redefine herself as a player is undeniable, which may be why some fans have been left wanting more from her off the field. As other U.S. national team players have grown into their own voices, Lloyd has refused to engage in any of the causes some of her teammates have taken up. During the Olympics, when most teams, not just the U.S., took a knee before games, not during the national anthems, in an anti-racism gesture, Lloyd stood. It seemed that Lloyd felt anything not related to winning was merely a distraction. But some fans have labeled her selfish or an unfeeling robot. (laughs) Such stubbornness is all part of Carly Lloyd mystique, though. While she may chalk her success up to hard work and determination, her most powerful tools have always been a large chip on her shoulder and a single-minded defiance. 
Her drive to win was so strong that ultimately she broke ties with her immediate family over it, not patching that rift until before the Tokyo Olympics. Back in 2013, Lloyd told me she wanted to be named FIFA's Player of the Year all-time seemingly ludicrous notion that she knew would earn her ridicule. The end goal is I want to become FIFA Women's Player of the Year, she said back in twenty back in April 2013. Some may laugh and think, wow, she's crazy, but there's no sense in dreaming to get to the top if you don't think you can get there. There's no point in putting a limit on yourself. Indeed, Lloyd has believed she could achieve the impossible, and she has. And at 39 years old, she became the oldest goal scorer in Olympic history and netted the game winner in the bronze medal match against Australia sealing a remarkable career since 2005 in which as long as a trophy was on the line she was never a mere merely a participant for the u.s national team but a key figure before the bronze medal match lloyd admitted that the bus ride to the stadium felt different knowing it was the last game of her major tournament of her career she reflected on everything she had done to reach that moment she was proud she said of the player she had that she became never wavering just being me she said unapologetically me it's been hard at times but i've trust the process so we read a lot from that article because i think that was a great article when i read that article i think it kind of gave both sides she was a winner she was determined she was focused but she also you know was very uh single-minded and Mm -hmm. stubborn and I don't like to use the word selfish when it comes to her because I know a lot of people do, but I think a lot of people do see her as selfish because a lot of people find that she she wanted to win. It wasn't necessarily big picture. It was almost like, what can Carly do for Carly? But that's just the way her mind was. I mean, I don't find a huge problem with that. With Yeah, I don't necessarily think that's selfish. That's just you have the mindset of a winner. You have a mind, okay. you have a different kind of mindset where it's like because her thought maybe is if I'm a winner, if I'm a winner first, then who is ever around me, the team will be a winner. Maybe that that was her thinking. Yeah, so I think you know it was complicated, but some people, if they you know, for someone to cut ties with their own immediate family for so long, thinks differently than a lot of other people. They just I think mean, differently. It's kind of an iconic movie. Let's, <laughs> let's be honest. That's how much <laughs> winning meant to her. Literally. Sorry, mom, I'm cutting you out for a while. I <laughs> for gotta winning. focus on Sarah. Sarah. That, right, right, right. right. <laughs> That's how much winning meant to her, and that turns a lot of people off. They they Others think winning's on. on. Winning's important, but when it comes at the expense of relationships, not just like romantic relations, but like families and you know telling the coaches what you thought of them. I mean, some people don't like that that personality trait. Yeah, she's a very divisive player, mm-hmm. I would say. Um, you either love her or you hate her. But you can never question her commitment to winning, you know, the commitment to actually winning. Or even, you know, she didn't go to Ali. She was invited to Ali and Ash's wedding and she was doing like a work commitment, um, which that's on brand for her. So that's not even strange to me that she missed right um, weddings uh, and things like that. But also the whole idea of her having such a singular focus of soccer comes that comes at the expense of anything else she could promote as you know a woman soccer player or as for equality you know that was mouthful but i I understand you're wrong but so so let's go back to the thing a lot of people most people talked about we never talked about it just because we hadn't talked about it but when at tokyo when uh when everyone kneeled um for 10 seconds even the refs knelt kneeled australia did their own thing they just held hands together but you know carly was the only one who didn't kneel and it really uh, upset people, including, I mean, including us. I mean, that's that's yeah. that's something where it's but The thing hard. is, I didn't expect her to. I Part you of me is like, I knew she would stand. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, it doesn't come out of left field. That's the thing. It's like, we, right. like it's almost like that makes sense. Because yeah. if you remember, remember at the Challenge Cup when they were certain people would stand and certain people would kneel and people would go on twitter and say how dare you kneel kind of thing yeah it started Um, a twitter war yeah so i mean i never quite liked that aspect of it i didn't think that was helpful but at the end of the day there has to be people who stand up for change you know whether people like it or don't there has you know that's the way you get respects to those people you have to get the ball rolling Mm -hmm. um but not everyone's gonna do it and carly's one of those people says i don't all those social issues i get it 
but I can't worry about that. I have to worry about winning. So that that's part of her legacy. At the end of the day, that's part of her legacy. And I know it's something that... Yeah, everybody's got a different legacy, yeah. I guess. And part of me, same kind of thing with a lot of people, just kind of, it, it's upsetting to the point of, let's not make it about ourselves. Let's make it about the common good of, you know, you know women, athletes, sports, you know. Um, but it's almost like you have to car- car- compartmentalize that and say, mm. she decides to do that. You might not be a fan of her, but that's her choice. And if her goal is winning and committed to winning, that's that's you either respect that or you don't. And well, because the thing is, everyone there's there's two there's two sides here. There's the there's the issue that oh this is, this is bigger than soccer. Mm, yeah, you know this issue. Um, and then there's the where kind of Carly stands where nothing's bigger than soccer. Right. Right. We would not. We would be remiss if we didn't. If we don't. If we don't mention that. But you know, if anything, the the determination she has to be. You know, because when we talk about Carlo, we talk about how fit she is, being the oldest player on the team, being the most fit. I mean, there. That's wild. That is not something that just happens by accident. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Your dedication. And I mean, the proof is in the pudding. You tell her she can't do it. She's gonna just prove you wrong. You know what I, I mean? I wish I was like that. Someone says I can't. I'm like, I agree with you. <laughs> I'm with you. Yeah, a lot of people are like that. <laughs> that makes me think how mentally strong she is, because we talk mm. about sports being a lot of mental. Yeah. You know, to be mentally strong and say, I know you don't think I can do this, or like telling people, you know, you don't deserve this or you're not good enough. She's like, you know, I'm gonna show you. I'm I'm gonna show you. You know what yeah. I mean? I wish um, we were mentally strong. I know. <laughs> we, we need those kind of people in the world. We do. Um, but it's your strength, Carly. Yeah, exactly. So no one has done what she has done ever. So um, is she divisive? Yes. Is she an amazing athlete? Yes. You know, is she, she rem- delicious. Probably. <laughs> she reminds me of one of those athletes, though, that maybe is not innately the most amazing soccer player, but just works that hard to become a good soccer player. Those kind of athletes always boggle my mind. I know in history, there's been a lot of athletes that, you know, you look at certain athletes, they were built to do certain sports. Some athletes really weren't, you know, they just how much hard work. Yes, you have to be talented, of course, but how much hard work you put into your craft to make you that that strong of a player so yeah at the end of the day i mean as divisive as she is at the end of the day she's um not a man football player who's taken advantage of women okay <laughs> let's just say that true that's a good point um yeah that's a good point maybe she's getting more criticism you men know, that's footballers a good point. Mm-hmm. men's footballers what, they where they they don't even get called out for oh, well abusing women Ronaldo like can't that. come in the country i'm over it i, I can't i can't <laughs> Anything that Carly has done, men, if they were to do it, we wouldn't even blink an eye. I, I truly believe that. We wouldn't blink an eye. But that story, that article was, I really liked that article because, um, because yeah, complicated. You know, she's a complicated person, but yeah, but sure. in so many respects that there's never going to be another player like Carly Lloyd. Another player might not n- never have as many caps as she does. Another player might no not. Cap. <laughs> What do you guys think? Are you are you someone who likes Carly but is uh, put off by her her win at all costs attitude? Amazingness. <laughs> win at all costs attitude, or are you someone who says, you know what, it doesn't bother me. I understand she's there for a goal, and that's to win, and that's to play soccer. I mean, where do you kind of fall on that? Um, she really is herself, and to be yourself, especially in this day and age, because so many people want to be PC, not even because mm. they truly want to be PC, because but because they're... they because they feel like if they're not, they won't be able to handle the criticism. Um, I almost like Carly, and more for that to say, I'm going to be who I am. I'm not going to be fake about it, rather than someone who truly doesn't believe what they're saying, just so they don't rile people up. Nothing worse than an FAB. Vegas, yeah, you know, I have zero respect for those kind of people who who pretend to be one thing but are really something else. Let's turn into a hater video of everything <laughs> we hate. Calm I know. Down. What do you guys think? Yeah, what um, do y'all think? Congrats to Carly for everything she's accomplished, though. I mean, congratulations. We, I, you know, do I have problems with her? Yes. Do I actually like her? Yes. You know, I do. And all that. Hey, she's actually gonna watch this video. And okay? that's a, she might actually. <laughs> I love you, Carly Lloyd. Okay, thank and you. And all that you know. And I will say this, and then we gotta go, but. The people who have made personal connections with her, Pino has made a person, you know, you think of Pino and Carly on the opposite ends of the spectrum. 
they're friends. You know what I mean? They respect each other. Well, you know, um, Tobin's from Jersey, so... Yeah. You know, they're friends. They're friends. She wrote a post about Ash her. Ash and Allie invited her to her wedding. You don't invite someone you, you don't, you're don't you not friends with to your wedding. Yeah, so she's she's got friends on the team. So, so. at the end of the day, as much divisiveness as she gets to show that she... You she also know, has iconicness. She well. has these friendships with these women, too. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that shows that, you know, even if you personally don't agree with what someone is saying, that, that doesn't mean they're a bad person. I mean, we all have family members, I'm sure, and friends that exactly. we disagree on exactly. issues like that. But we're not about to disown them, are we? Exactly. Well, I'm, 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 I'm very close. <laughs> I'm very close to you disowning know who you are. someone. We congratulate you, Carly. You have done things no one has ever done. We'll never do again. And that will never be forgotten. You'll go down. We love you. You will, you will go down in history. And I also heard a little someone saying that Freya Coombs leaving Gotham City. There's a head coach role available. Oh. You never do know. It. You never know. Do what do you guys think do about that? It. Do <laughs> it. Questions, comments down below. We'll talk to you guys later. Have a good day. Bye. Bye.